The United States government files a notice to sell over 2,900 Bitcoin, which has a value of about $130 million. What does this mean for the price of Bitcoin as we are in a downtrend? And Celsius Network just moved $1 billion in Ethereum to an address which is allocated to Coinbase Prime. Are they about to dump $1 billion in ETH? And we got big news that crypto custodian BitGo receives an investment from iconic cash handling firm Brinks. You may have seen the Brinks cash trucks driving around from banks. This is big. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, Bitcoin right now is sitting at $39,840, just below 40K. I'm still anticipating more downward sell pressure, the price going between 30 to 35K. We'll see where it finds its support. But there is a lot of negative news out there. You know, it's funny. Every time there is a pullback and a bearish scenario, there's a lot of negative news that comes out. Part of that is people who are shorting Bitcoin. That's the time they put out their narratives like, oh, no, be scared, right? Sell your Bitcoin because that helps them to fulfill their respective shorts and make money off of it. Look, it's all part of the market cycle. I'm still very bullish on the macro outlook. Short term, bearish, chops, pullbacks, whatever, right? Sideways consolidation and all that, all part of the market cycles. But I'm bullish. I am anticipating possibly seeing new all-time highs this year for Bitcoin and a blow-off top all-time high uh, in 2025. So the United States files notice to sell $130 million in Bitcoin linked to Silk Road agent. So funny that this news is coming out now. The public notification lists two lots of Bitcoin that the government plans to sell. The first is roughly 2,800 Bitcoin for a roughly $129 million. The second smaller lot would sell 58 Bitcoin for about $3 million. The Bitcoins are linked to Ryan Fares, who was sentenced in Maryland last year to 54 months in prison on a charge of money laundering conspiracy. Fares and his father, Joseph, were found guilty of laundering Bitcoin initially used for drug trafficking that should have been forfeited to the United States. Fares, initially convicted in 2018, claimed to have access to Bitcoin used for darknet transactions. However, he and his father were found to have conspired in an attempt to transfer more than 2,874 Bitcoin to a third party so that the funds could be moved into foreign bank account. And these Bitcoins are also tied to Sean Bridges, a former Secret Service agent and part of the Baltimore Silk Road Task Force. It's crazy to, that Bitcoin tied to Silk Road is still being an issue here, but I guess you know, it's going to take some time for this to all clear up. Um, that's certainly not an issue. Bitcoin is moved past this entirely. Uh, it's just people popping up their heads. And once again, the, the timing of this news, I don't think it's a coincidence that it's coming up now when there's down pressure on the price. Bridges was sentenced to a six-year price term in 2015 in connection with the theft of Bitcoin during the U.S. government's investigation of the, of the Silk Road dark marketplace. Here's a quote. According to admissions made in connection with this guilty plea, Bridges admitted to using a private key to access a digital wallet belonging to the U.S. government and subsequently transferring the Bitcoin to other wallets at other Bitcoin exchanges to which only he had access, a Department of Justice press release said. So, folks, am I worried about this? Is this something huge and big? It's just 2,900 Bitcoin. This is nothing. Uh, you may say, why is this nothing? Well, look at the amount of Bitcoin that's flowing into the ETFs, right? BlackRock, Fidelity, and these Wall Street firms have become vacuums sucking a ton of Bitcoin, billions of dollars. This is just $130 million, so it's nothing. I think this is more of a uh, news item that, that drives sell pressure. It puts fear in the market. We also got reports today that Celsius just moved a billion dollars in Ethereum to an address they've been engaging with, with Coinbase Prime. This is being reported by analyst Will Clement. 
And uh, we'll see what happens. Look, you know, they have to do some distributions because of the bankruptcy. I think FTX, the same thing, you know, it's been reported that FTX has been selling off GBTC. So let them distribute. Let them get this all out of the way. Guess what, folks? It's better it happens now. I know some of you are going to be like, what, dude, are you crazy? Why are you saying you want this to happen? I don't want it to happen, and I can't stop it. But the timing, it's happening now as we're uh, still in the maybe second inning of this bull market, right? Second phase. We're not in the full uh, euphoric run up to new all time highs, euphoria phase yet. So we are still early, my friends. Um, we got some, still got some ways to go. And we're going to have corrections along the way. This is normal. When in doubt, zoom out. So let Bitcoin go down to 30K or 35K. Let it find its support level there. Bounce as we head into the halving. And then more money comes into the ETFs. And we continue to move higher. Higher highs, higher lows. Uh, that is what I'm anticipating. That's what I'm looking at. And if Bitcoin goes on to 30K, 33K, I'm buying. I'm dollar cost averaging in. That's not financial advice. Do your own research, of course. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. BlackRock now holds 45,688 Bitcoin worth over $1.8 billion for their spot Bitcoin ETF. And not only that, folks, here, one user on Twitter shared an email he received from BlackRock Marketing. They are having a webinar tomorrow, Friday, January 26th, and it's for RIA advisors, registered investment advisors. The title of it is Bitcoin Access Made Easy. So this is what I've been talking about for a long time. The marketing is going to start, the brand awareness and uh, educating the RIAs and the wealth managers. Not all of them have been putting money in, right? They need to be educated. They need to know what's happening here. What are the fees? Where's the custodian? All that jazz. It's coming, folks. They're going to allocate their clients' funds, uh, not all of it, but some of it into Bitcoin. So these ETFs are only going to get bigger and stronger and more valuable. And uh, they're going to be sucking up a lot of the Bitcoin supply. And then you have the halving coming up where the mining supply the reward gets cut in half. So uh, less of Bitcoin, you have the scarcity aspect. All of these things are going to drive the price up. Now, another Bitcoin ETF issuer, which is Bitwise, and I've had Matt Hogan of Bitwise many times on the podcast, they did something incredible, folks. They published an address showing their Bitcoin holdings, what they're holding in their ETF. And, at, you know, they published this uh, as of January 23rd. They show the address. They have over um, 11,858 Bitcoin in that trust. And the market value is over $465 million, which is incredible. I hope the other issuers do this. This is great transparency. I love this. Proof of reserves, transparency reports, audits. I love this, and I, I hope this is the standard so that we can all verify it. But look at this, folks. Because of crypto, because it's on-chain, we can see this real time. You can go look at this wallet address. You listening, watching, whatever it is, you can go pull up this wallet address and verify that. Isn't that incre incredible? Right? You can't go verify what JP Morgan Chase is holding for gold or silver, or and, and we know there's been reports of them manipulating these things. Um, but you can, you know, let's say BlackRock puts out the wall address, you can go verify that. It's incredible, uh, amazing, and I hope uh, others follow suit. But great, great move by Bitwise. Shout out to Matt Hogan, Hunter Horsley, and those folks. Now, the SEC continues their buffoonery. Uh, scumbag regulator Gary Gensler, they have delayed the decision on the proposal for Grayscale's Ethereum trust with order to institute proceedings. So they, they've they been delaying all the Ethereum spot ETF applications. So we'll see where this goes. Gary Gensler could be taken to court again, and he will definitely lose. Now, the tricky part is Gary, even before Congress, does not want to save Ethereum's security or not. He doesn't want to reiterate what Bill Hinman and Jay Clayton and these guys said. Uh, I mean, we know the whole Bill Hinman situation and the backroom deal he did. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Gary cannot afford to keep taking losses here. It's going to be a big PR nightmare, a, a ton of reputational damage to him and the SEC. Uh, but we know he's being controlled by Elizabeth Warren. So he's a dog on a leash and we'll see what happens. But, you know, if they approve it, he'll be all right. But 
you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great crypto platform. I've been using them since 2018. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins on this platform. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. You can also trade precious metals on this platform, such as gold, silver, palladium, platinum as well. So a great platform. I've interviewed the CEO, the CFO, and many representatives. They have a great app. And best of all, folks, they have proof of reserves. They have transparency reports. So you can go take a look at that and verify the assets. And they don't commingle or lend out your funds. This is a great platform. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. Now, Patrick McHenry, who's chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, who threatened to issue a subpoena against scumbag regulator Gary Genser. Remember, he called out Gary Genser in the hearing last year. Well, he was on CNBC this morning and he talks about a lot of things, you know, as it relates to the border and, and, uh, and everything that's happening in the United States. But a lot of time was spent on crypto. And we know there are two bills in the House. He's trying to get them through. He said he's going to work on pushing them through this year. Fingers crossed, folks, that he can get these bills out of the House and, and they will make their way to the Senate. That will be a big win. Yes, it won't be the regulations put into law. But folks, if we can at least get out the House and get it to the Senate, then we just got to push through the Senate and then it's sent to the president. I don't think it's going to go to Biden, honestly, uh, in this year. It might be to the next president, which, look, it could be Biden. I don't know, right? It, what if Biden wins again? But, um, you know, if it can make through the Senate, it'll be great. But this will be a big, big hurdle to get through. And I tweeted at Patrick McHenry. And, sir, if you're listening, please issue that subpoena against Gary Genser. Now, Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business highlighted the following regarding the subpoena. She said, if Patrick McHenry does serve a subpoena, Gary Genser will have to comply Trump White House official Peter Navarro sentenced to four months for defying January 6th subpoena. So not to get political about, you know, January 6th or whatever it is, but rather uh, it's the law that if he doesn't comply, uh, Gary Gensel will have problems. <laughs> you have to go to jail. And I wouldn't mind seeing him go to jail. Uh, you know, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, folks, let's go to some very bullish news. Crypto custodian BitGo receives investment from iconic cash handling firm Brinks. Many of you may have seen these Brinks trucks driving around. They're armored trucks. They are transporting cash. So it's a well-known brand and company. And uh, BitGo is a very reputable custodian. I've had Mike Belshi, the founder and CEO, on the podcast. And they're one of the top crypto custodians. So the fact that they are getting investment from a legacy company that has nothing to do with crypto that is involved with handling cash is incredible it shows you crypto is here to stay everybody's getting on board brinks the 164 year old cash handling firm known for its bulletproof trucks has made a strategic investment in cryptocurrency custody specialist bitgo the company said on wednesday the financial details of the investment were not disclosed Crypto has its roots in retail self-custody, but these days institutions are investing billions on behalf of clients, often requiring the backup of fragmented master keys and physical hardware security modules, which is where a firm like Brinks with its global secure logistics network comes in. Here's a quote from a BitGo VP Baylor Myers. As much of our industry and the financial services industry prepares for the digital tokenization of potentially a lot of assets, it was very strategic on their behalf to reach out to us. Uh, I think Brinks is going to continue to allocate resources to its office of digital assets. Folks, when you really think about these companies and what they do, and now they are making a push into crypto, they have digital asset divisions and crypto divisions, as clearly you're saying here, and they're partnering with crypto companies. I hope you see how bullish this is. Now, it's not going to happen overnight because like some people are going to say, well, why isn't this pumping the price? Well, we are in a downward trend. So you have to understand fundamentals, the technicals and the charts. You can't ignore that. You have to look at it holistically. But this type of partnership will bring in tons of capital um, make it safer for wealthy investors to put their money into crypto, and that will drive the price and the value up over time. 
And it's incredible what is taking place. Uh, so bullish, guys. Here's some more bullish news. New block trading offering seeks to boost RIA crypto assets. RIAs are registered investment advisors. We were just talking about them for the, with regards to the Bitcoin ETF. And this is being set up by Anchorage Digital Bank. I've interviewed Diogo Monica a couple of times from Anchorage. Uh, you guys can check out those interviews. They are set to facilitate crypto block trades for registered investment advisors as part of its bid to boost access for financial pros looking to enter the segment. On and off ramps being built, folks, and on ramps for some of the biggest investors in the world. The offering comes via a link up with On Ramp Invest, a digital asset wealth platform working with US RIAs with combined assets under management of $40 billion. It follows Anchorage introducing custody and settlement services for RIAs in November. Anchorage Digital became a bank chartered by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency in January 2021. The firm's CEO, Nathan McCauley, said Anchorage wants to be a regulatory solve for RIAs with mandates to hold crypto assets with a qualified custodian. Folks, I am so bullish. I don't know if any of you are realizing what the hell is happening. The BitGo news, the Anchorage news, they are building the on-ramps for traditional investors and wealth advisors to usher in tons of capital into this market. Uh, it's incredible what, what's happening. Now, we got news here that Swan Bitcoin is purchasing miners to bolster their institutional offering. The move comes as the firm eyes a public listing and a Series C in the ballpark of $150 million. So it looks like they want to go public. Swan, a Bitcoin-focused financial services company, announced Thursday that it has been building out a Bitcoin mining arm since the summer of 2023. Swan also said it is eyeing a Series C and is hoping to become publicly traded within the next year. So folks, this is along the lines of many crypto companies going public as the IPO market returns. You know, in the era of quantitative tightening QT 2022, 2023, it was rough, right? Nobody wants to go public. There's no capital, there's no easy money. I think we're gonna start to see IPOs return later this year as the Fed cuts rates, the money printer starts, and definitely 2025 is gonna be, I think, back to IPO party days, right? Um, look, we, we've been talking about Ripple, Circle, and, and many others are going to go public. So Swan Mining will run under Swan Institutional, a recently announced division that also plans to offer Bitcoin-backed lending, advisor services, asset management, private equity, and Bitcoin trust company. So Swan is trying to get into the Bitcoin mining business here. It makes sense. Um, there's going to be huge demand for Bitcoin with these ETFs and all these big Wall Street players here. And not just in the U.S., but globally, uh, uh, certainly sovereign wealth funds. A lot of folks in the Middle East are going to want Bitcoin. And uh, it is going to be more difficult to mine Bitcoin, more expensive, but the price is rising. So uh, certainly you can be profitable, but you know you certainly have to know how to run your business because there's bull markets and there's bear markets. So you got to make sure you're taking your profits. Um, we saw some Bitcoin miners had problems. Some had to go bankrupt, but that's comes down to business. How are you managing your business? Now, folks, Powerloom to host first node mint on Polygon's proof of stake blockchain. 5,000 nodes will be available for pre mint. So I'm bullish on Polygon. The native token is Matic, uh, and Polygon is a layer two Ethereum scaling solution. A lot of brands, a lot of companies are using this blockchain. They recently partnered with uh, Fox News Corporation to fight AI deep fakes to put content on the blockchain. So uh, let me give you the details here. Decentralized data startup Powerloom is launching a node mint on Polygon's proof of stake network. Powerloom is designed to enable protocols to index and query blockchain data in a decentralized manner. The protocol is designed for developers building DEX aggregators for any other Web3 applications that require reliable data. An initial pre-mint of 5,000 nodes will be accessible to interested participants who meet the necessary criteria. These participants, if selected, will be given a soul-bound token that will enable them to operate Powerloom Snapshotter Lite nodes. Soul-bound tokens are tokens that can only be owned or transferred by a specific user address, unlike NFTs, which are freely transferable and tradable. Soul-bound tokens often serve as a credential. Pre-minting will end on February 4th. On February 6th, winners will be announced. 
Swarup Hedge, co-founder and CEO of Paraloom Protocol, told BlockWorks in an interview. So interesting stuff happening, guys. Final item here, Bank of England, Treasury commit to user privacy for potential CBDC. Um, now, there's been a lot of backlash and, and a lot of concerns, even from myself, that I am concerned about our uh, privacy with CBDCs and governments abusing that. And, you know, we've seen China do a social credit system and all that. I don't want that here. And I'm sure the people in England and the UK don't want that or the EU. So it would be, it would be great if these governments build a CBDC and they're, they're transparent about it uh, with the you know blockchain data and showing uh, the, the setup that, hey, we're not going to take any draconian moves and whatever it is, right? Um, and I hope, you know, we have to take them by their word, but if they can show some sort of proof, it would be great. So the Bank of England and the UK Treasury are moving forward with their planning process for a potential digital pound. However, this doesn't mean that the UK will begin implementing a central bank digital currency. According to a press release, the government will continue to examine how a digital pound would interact with consumers and how it would be incorporated into the UK economy before the bank of or the treasury move forward with any prospective launch of a digital pound. They would seek further public consultation and would introduce legislation to protect user privacy. So that's a good thing, guys. And, uh, you know, they refer to it as Britcoin. So we will see. Um, look, this is coming. Uh, this is inevitable. I don't see anybody stopping this. The good thing is we have alternatives. We have Bitcoin. We have other cryptocurrencies, stable coins as well. Um, and it was ho hopefully the governments do this right. And there's no type of draconian setup where they can have a social credit system, control how you spend, put any type of expiration on money. And, you know, they don't use it to violate your rights, your freedom of speech and, and so forth. But one of the things I've been talking about for a long time is which blockchains they will be building these CBDCs on. Because I think that's going to be very, very good for those respective blockchain native tokens. So whether it be Ethereum and ETH, the XRP ledger and XRP, Algorand, HBAR, Hedera, right guys? Um, this is where we want to pay close attention. That's what I'm looking for because I'm looking to profit off of this. Um, because uh, like I said, we can't stop it, but at least we have... Uh, alternatives, and we can at least push back and fight and say, hey, we don't want this CBDC. It, essentially, if this CBDC doesn't is not built right and it violates our rights, we, we you know we we can push back. Anyway, guys, that's the news. Let me know what you think, guys. Uh, leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five star rating on the podcast platforms, folks. Please, please, please subscribe to my free email newsletter. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Links will be in the description. Guys, if you haven't checked out my interview with Kathy Wood of ARK Invest or David Schwartz of Ripple, please do. Uh, you can watch those interviews. They're really good. And I'm working hard to bring you guys great guests and to um, put, put out good content. So please follow me. It doesn't take a dollar out of your pocket. It's free to just follow and like. So thank you for your support. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you all later.